Hello, today we are talking about how to roll your kayak, which is an important skill. It's a self-rescue skill. It saves you a ton of energy and it builds confidence, right? Remembering that we're all in between swims, so no shame when you miss your roll and you have to swim. And it's always good to continue to practice and get proficient with your roll. So before we go into the physical breakdown that is in the physical skills progression of the role, I want to start with that the most important part of a successful role, the number one thing you can do to help yourself role successfully is, if, is develop a mindset for rolling, right? It's all, a lot of it, so much of it is in the mind. And the first thing you want to do is you want to be real with yourself about how comfortable you feel underwater, okay? So, you know, I've had clients who they're missing their roles and I ask them how they feel underwater because it's obvious to me that they're feeling panicked and rushing it. And I'll be like, no, 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 I don't feel scared. And then we have to break it down together, right, to where they can admit that they're a little panicky underwater and that that's okay. There's nothing shameful about feeling nervous underwater. You're in a, your legs are trapped in a plastic boat with a spray skirt on top and you're flipping over and we can't breathe underwater. Okay. So, so let go of any judgment about yourself that you might have about feeling uncomfortable underwater and just be with it. Yeah, I'm uncomfortable underwater because when you acknowledge that, when you, when you uh, accept what is, then from that place, you can actually make progress. Again, what you resist persists. Okay, so stop resisting the fact that you might feel uncomfortable. It doesn't matter that you were a swimmer in high school or college or whatever. It's different when your body is out in the water than when your legs are stuck in a boat and you know you have to actually work to get yourself out. Okay, so be real with that. And then once you're real with that, then you can work on getting comfortable. Right? And some strategies for getting comfortable are, you know, do a few wet exits. And if you're an instructor watching this, give your students time. Have them do the wet exit three, four times. Right? Don't rush over the wet exit. It's not something to be rushed over so you can get to the good stuff. Uh, allowing folks to get comfortable on the, uh, underwater via the wet exit is one of the best gifts you can give them. It's the foundation for their white whitewater kayaking mindset. So go back to the wet exit. Go back to doing tea rescues or, uh, you know, allow, staying underwater and seeing how long you can uh, uh, be underwater. The other thing is you could simply, out of your kayak, time yourself holding your breath so you know how long you actually can hold your breath and how long it takes to do the roll. When you'll, these video clips that I'm going to show you of the roll, every time I video myself, it's usually about four seconds. That's usually how long it takes from like set up under to back up again. So four seconds, right? So if you time yourself holding your breath, I'm sure that you can hold your breath for more than four seconds. But give yourself that gift of timing yourself, holding your breath underwater, not in your kayak, and then maybe do the same thing in your kayak. Okay, so... Find a trusted person that you can work with that you know is going to spot you, right, to work through this stuff. And also, uh, you know, it, it, your, some of your fear might be based on past experiences, so it's important to work through that, to re- acknowledge that that was the past, that this is what's happening now, and now is not what's happening in the past, and to, you know, work through strategies that can help you do that. Right. And um, so feeling comfortable underwater, that's a huge piece. Next is stop expecting things to go wrong, right? Just because the role is counterintuitive and uh, it can feel scary does not mean it's always going to go wrong, right? So start expecting it to go right. And so that's your B, like be someone who has a, a strong role. How do you be someone? Well, think about who would you be as a person if your role was awesome all the time? What kind of person would you be? Think about that for yourself. 
and start walking around uh, visualizing that that you are that person okay and then from there being someone who has a great role then your actions will follow yeah and then um, what's what I find really helpful with my clients is to have them choose a mantra or a word that they practice every single time okay every single time that they they practice so it could be reach it could be sweep it could be light um, it could be you got this whatever word works for you to trigger in your brain that smooth a skills progression or that smooth smooth performance okay so but that mantra you want to practice it every time in flat water while you're being spotted in moving water so that when you flip over unintentionally it's the first thing that you focus on and when your brain focuses on that it just goes to that word and that that physical trigger then you're not thinking about being scared okay so there's so much mental prep for the role Um, and I'm and so focus on that Practice that, be real with that, um, contemplate it. And we're also going to go uh, over the skills, the hard skills of the role um, in the next few clips. So if you have strategies that you use for your mindset in rolling, I want to hear about them. So please post about them and um, yeah, love to hear your insights, what has worked for you. So let's take a look at some clips and break down the roll. So here's my sweep roll. It's my, that's my go-to roll. So here's my setup. Sweep out, hip snap at the same time to the finish. I am going to focus on the sweep roll because in my opinion, it's the role that works for the most people, different body shapes and types. And it's my go-to. So notice that my setup is a twist. It's not a tuck forward. It's a twist where my, the middle of my paddle is in line with the middle of my hip. So then I go over. And the reason I'm twisted is so that then I can untwist into a hip snap. So here I flip over There's and a big notice that my that paddle is not have above to be way out the of surface the water, of the water. It's and that is more surface. important on the C to C, which is actually why I like the sweep. The sweep roll, as long as your paddle is at or near the surface and you have good movement, it still works. The C to C roll, if you don't have your hands and your uh, paddle above the water, it's less likely to work. It's a lot harder. So the sweep roll is very accessible to folks who have uh, limited flexibility. This part right here, this little sweep away, this first half or first little bit of the roll is the, the hardest part for a lot of folks. The sweep away from the boat, out away from the boat, it requires that you really reach with your whole body away from the boat instead of pulling down towards the bottom. And as I sweep out, I hip snap and I finish. So I rotate towards my paddle, my back arm is relaxed, my hands are cocked up so that I I shed resistance, right? Not once was my head like trying to get up and away from the water. The sweep roll is one fluid motion, so let's look at it from underwater. Set up, sweep out, hip snap at the same time, and finish. Here's another view. So set up, sweep out away, still reaching, hip snap at the same time, and finish. Here's an example of me flipping over unintentionally after I do a stern squirt, and it's an interesting one because the water's so clear that you can really see well. So I do my stern draw, I mean, I do my stern squirt, and I can't save it because there's not enough room. The stand-up paddleboard is right there, so my paddle's too vertical to brace. So I go under, and I'm looking for the surface, but I don't quite get my paddle up to the surface. And this is why I like the sweep a lot, is I don't quite make it to the surface, so that's my setup. 
my hands are underwater. I'm sweeping out, okay, but, I, but I'm holding too much tension on my left hip, so my, my head is coming up, right? So I'm kind of stuck. When your head goes, comes up first, is because there's too much tension in that left hip. So your right hip cannot engage, right? So I had to create surface tension with my paddle, with a sculling brace, in order to bring myself up. So a couple of things about that clip. So I, I am talking in left and right. That's my dominant side roll. Okay, so I tend to hip snap, hip snap dominantly on my right side, which is what I was doing in all of these video clips. So when I say that when my head comes up, it's because I'm holding too much tension in my left hip. That hip I'm referring to is the hip that I'm not doing my hip snap with. It's actually preventing me. In order to keep my head over here, I have to hold tension in this hip. It's just like what the body does. So if I can think of relaxing that hip, then I can, and engaging the other hip, that works really well. So don't get stuck on left and right, whatever your dominant side is, right? If your head is coming up, it's because you're holding too much tension in the hip opposite the hip that you're hip snapping with or that you want to hip snap with. You have to release tension in that other hip that's holding your head up in order to do your hip snap on the other side, okay? And uh, the other point I wanna bring up is, and this is true for bracing, right? A brace is not about the paddle. So when I was doing my uh, sculling brace to bring myself up, I had to release the tension in my hips. A brace is, when it is a supportive stroke, but it has to be moving because it's creating surface tension, okay, for your body to then bring your hips back underneath you. So I just wanted to mention that. Same with the roll. The paddle is only there for surface tension, right, so that you can do the movement of the hip snap with your body or with the, the sweep, it's rotated to one side, sweep out, rotate other side, and hip snap, okay? And if you notice, if you just sit where you are, and if you sit straight and then rotate really fast to one side, you'll notice that this hip engages, it lifts, right? And that's why I like the sweep as well, because it's more focused on core and rotating Right, so um, try that. You sit there and rotate fast, really fast with your core. You can't just do it with your shoulders, with your core, and that hip is going to automatically lift. And that's what you're harnessing those body mechanics, those natural body mechanics when you're doing the sweep roll. So that's something that you can check out also. So this isn't necessarily a step-by-step, -step, like you're a beginner, you're learning your role. This is for you all who have some experience, who are refining your roles. And I hope that this has been helpful for you. And I look forward to hearing your insights, your questions. So post them, look forward to great conversation about it and um, get out there and practice your role. And of course, when you get out there and practice, Right, it's really important that you uh, you can't expect to have a, a great role if you're not practicing. That's the other thing I see with my clients. They avoid practicing the role because it's too cold, it's too hard, it's too scary. But if you want a good role, you got to get out there with someone who's spotting you and do the practice and practice your tea rescue at the same time or your boat to boat rescue. And the more it's it's small, consistent actions over time. So get out there. I know it can be tough. You got this. And the the you know, you will get over the hump at some point if you're struggling with your role. And yeah, it's it's about practice and doing hard things and facing our fears. That's what kayaking is so rich in uh, in learning and teaching. Uh, you know, how to find our courage, how to do hard things. And it is such good practice for our entire life, right? In all areas of our lives. So get out there and practice. Can't wait to hear your feedback and we'll talk soon.